tell me which two terminals? Ooh. Yes? One and two. One and two. Very good. Now, I if one of that. you can answer, it's in the motor, the motor centrifugal switch, 1M to 2M, almost all dryers, it's the same one. This centrifugal switch here is also here. Sometimes they draw a dotted line because when this one moves, That's that one moves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I got two loads, right? My heater and my motor. What load am I missing? Time or motor. Timer motor. Yeah. And then I could go like this for my timer motor. Does anybody know what that is? This is the bias. The power the resistor. <coughs> well, that's a timer switch, whether we time dry or automatic dry. All right. Okay, so we drew a diagram. Big deal. Got all these wires now. We start off with just a simple light bulb. Now we got a whole dryer diagram up there. That is a fully functioning whirlpool dryer, just as it is. Everything that's on there, and it's wired correct. All right? I got a problem. My motor's not running. There's a lot of stuff up there to test, right? <coughs> if this motor doesn't run, am I going to check this timer motor? No. What makes you say no? What? Why don't I test that timer motor? Because it's not in series with the motor. It's not in series with the motor. That's... Partially correct. Okay. Well, it's not here. What you said was right, but you didn't not... say enough to complete the thought. A lot of people are saying, oh, not in series motor, but that don't make no sense to me. I don't. It's mm. not it's not directly in series because if it's the timer motor, right? So that has control over the timer, <laughs> which activates that motor at specific times through the cycle. That motor doesn't activate that timer motor doesn't activate the drive mm -hmm. motor. So let's, let's talk for a second. And, and I just brought that up as a hypothetical to get you guys to think for a second. You see all this stuff here. We got thermostats, we got heaters, we got centrifugal switches, we got door switches, timer motors, timer switches. You go to a machine that's got all this stuff on here. And you go to someone's house and they say, I press start, my dryer don't run. Okay. You look at it and say, well, the motor could be bad. And you press the start button. That's what starts the motor. It could be bad. Those are both correct. But what if you check those two parts and they're both good? You ohmed them out. Yes. Did you bother to check voltage to see if it was getting power? Ah, check voltage where? Directly where the wall is. Be specific. I Not have three outlet. test points oh, for voltage. On line one and line two. Neutral. Line one no. and neutral. Or line, line one, one and neutral. neutral. <laughs> line one to neutral, my motor runs off of. Line one to line two is only for my heater. You were going to add something? No, I was going to say that. You going to say that? Okay. So the first thing you want to do is check power to the wall. Let me tell you, in some of these older homes in the house, there's a fuse here and a fuse here. You know them big cartridge fuses, they look like mm -hmm. long? One of those go bad, the motor don't work. This one here. The motor won't work. If the motor won't work, the timer won't run, the heater won't work because in order for the motor to work, this switch has to go over when the motor runs. The motor don't run, the heater don't work either. Okay? But if this fuse fails, what would the complaint be from the customer? It's not, it's not, it's not getting hot. Not drying. It's not getting hot, not drying. The dryer will run. Will the timer run? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's go back to my problem. Okay. Remember I said at the beginning with that light bulb, before you start taking panels off, and the motor is one of the hardest components in that whole dryer to check. It's not hard to test, but you have to take the top off, the front off, the belt off, the drum out. Now you can get down to the motor and test it. If you don't check power in the wall, you waste your time. Okay, so we check the power in the wall, and guess what? We have 120, we have 120, and we have 240. 
Is that good or bad? Good. It's good. good. It's good. good. Okay. Yeah. Now we got to start taking some panels off. But before we take panels off, we have to make a plan. Just like you go camping. Okay, guys, tomorrow we're all going to go camping. I want you to meet me outside the school, and we're going to go... We're going to go upstate about about 50 miles up in Okeechobee, and we're going to go camping. Everybody going to be ready? Yeah. See you tomorrow. What are you going to bring? That's what I got in my truck. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I know you, you're ready to go. But uh, most of you, you'll be like, yeah, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. You show up the next day, you don't have a tent. You don't have a sleeping bag. You didn't bring food. You didn't bring water. You're just here. Okay. You have to have a plan. And how do we come up with a plan? This is, this is the part about troubleshooting you have to understand. When we approach a diagram, we approach a machine, we don't just start randomly testing things. We, we check power in the wall, the power's good. Now we have to get this wiring diagram and we have to look, okay, where am I going to test? Why am I going to test there? Okay, so what do I need to do with this diagram before I start taking panels off and make a test. Decide where you're gonna test and what might be the issue. Okay, so what is the easiest way to determine what am I gonna test? Trace out, line about. Okay, from line a little one more specific. One. Trace, trace out line one to neutral and how it runs through the motor. Yes, and that's what I was getting at. When you say the motor don't work, what we need to do is we need to look just at the circuit for the motor and I'll explain. Here's my motor. I gotta get this power to my motor and to neutral, just like that light bulb, line one to neutral. So we have to look at the circuit. Now I'm gonna use a different color and it comes through here, through here, comes through the motor, through the start switch, and out. Okay, that is the circuit to get power to my motor. Do I have to check this? No. Negative. Do I have to check this? Negative. Do I have to check this? Negative. So, let's see how good my tools are. I'll help this guy do it. Ooh, look at that. Come on. Okay, that's good enough. All of this stuff down here is irrelevant. You don't need it for testing. This now looks simpler, doesn't it, without all this other parts on here? Oh, yeah. So when you look at this big, crazy diagram, one of the first things you need to do is say, okay, my motor's not working. How does power get through the diagram to that motor to make it work? Okay, what components now Loads and controls are in this circuit. We'll start at line one. What what com, what controls or components? What's the first That's one? The first off is the timer. Timer what? Oh, timer switch. Timer switch and that would be black, the blue. Okay, so that timer switch could be bad, right? Yeah, sure. What's next? The fuse. The thermal fuse. And that's blue to blue. And this right here is timer number one. That's how it's labeled on the diagram. Timer switch number one, thermal fuse, blue to blue. What else next? Hmm. Door switch. No. Oh. We're going from the plug back to neutral. Controls and loads. In order. order. In what order. is next? The motor. The motor. The motor. The motor. So we got the drive motor. Blue to white, or it could be black. White and black. Sometimes it's that color. What's next? Push to start. The push to start. That's here. I'm just going to put P T S. Post traumatic stress. Thank you. And then what's door next? Switch, door switch. Door switch. Door switch. Which is here. 
Now what we've done is we've taken the diagram and we said, how does power flow through that motor? And it's got to go through how many different controls? One, two, three, four. Yes, sir. Weren't the timer switch contained just inside of the timer, so you would just basically ohm out the timer? Yep, you'd ohm out two terminals on the timer. A timer switch um, has a box like this, and then it'll have multiple wires connected to it, and one of them's going to be black here. Let's say this is black, and this one's going to have a blue wire. And then down here, it, this timer switch is black to red. So you've got a red wire here. So from here to here, there's a switch that controls the motor. And from here to here is a switch that controls the heater. And then there's another switch up here, a single pull double throw, which is the timer motor switch. So inside of there, we got one, two, single pull, single throw, single pull, single throw. It's only got two terminals. Single pull, double throw, single pull, but it can throw two ways. It can go to this one or to this one whether it goes down or up. But we only need to be concerned with these two terminals right here, even though we got a box with all these wires on it. That's why I added the color wires, because when you look at the timer, you have to find the black and the blue wire if you want to test that one switch. Okay? Everybody follow me so far? Okay. So... Once we've created this circuit, we're going to need to make a test. Someone tell me where and how we need to make that test. Anybody? Ross? What about connecting directly to the motor? Okay. And then power directly to the motor. Specifically where? Specifically on can read those points. You don't need to know. You should know those points because the black and module white. number two has the actual terminals. Is it on all dryer motors? Four and five. Four and five, four and five M. That's right. Four M is here. Five M is here. And you're gonna put your meter here and here. And I get zero volts. Now what? Go back. Huh? Back trace. No. Uh, that's own test. Because this is a wrong test, even though it's the right points. Trish, what? Good. I said you tell me where and how to make the test. I said you I told me to put my meter on 4 and 5 M. No, I didn't. For voltage. That is a correct you said point. Ohms, right? no, I you said, said apply ohms. direct voltage to the motor and see if it's That's not troubleshooting. We're using a meter to find the problem. I would put my that, is, hmm. that is... That is... A good test. But I said, tell me how. I put my meter there. I don't have voltage. What are we missing? Push to start. Push to start. Push to start. You have to press the button? Push to start, yeah. Ah, if you don't press the button, this switch is open, that switch is open. Power's not going to get there, huh? Mm -hmm. What other thing needs to be done? Door switch needs to be turned. The, the timer needs to be turned to a point where the circuit's. Timer has to be put in a cycle so that switch is made. You can't have the timer in the off position. You have a timer dial, and this is off, and this is time dry here. You can't have the timer here, because that switch is going to be open. So you have to turn the timer into a cycle, and you have to press the start button. Then the last thing someone said? Door switch. The door switch. You have to make sure the door is closed. The door switch would have to be closed or connected, because if you don't do that, you're not going to get power there. So, some things you may take for granted, but you have to think, okay, well, I checked power to my motor. Z said check power to the motor. I don't have power. Oh, I have to press the start button while I'm testing power to the motor. I have to have the door switch closed, and I have to have the timer in the right cycle that's sending power to that motor. Because if I don't have those three settings connected, I'll never get power to the motor. Okay? So... You close the door, you turn the timer to the cycle, and you press the start button, and you don't have power. Mm -hmm. What do we do now? We could check the fuse.
fuse. We can check the timer. We can check the other parts. But let's talk a little bit. We got switches and controls on both sides of the motor, right? Now, we can go one piece at a time. We can go with this meter lead here, go here, 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 looking for voltage. Or we can put it back and we can go here, 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 looking for voltage. But what test can I make that would tell me which way my problem is? In other words, I check power to the motor. I don't have it to the motor. At least four and five, I don't get a reading. What test could I make that could tell me, oh, the problem's on this side, you gotta go this way, or the problem's on this side, you go that way. How can I determine which way my problem is? Because if you're in a machine and you have all these things to test, if I can make one test that tells me my problem's on my one side, my problem's on neutral side, that would cut half of my tests out and make it so I can just cut just two loads, I mean two controls, instead of four controls. Yes, Julian. I was gonna say, you can put your lead on L1 and then right after the motor, so that way when you start the unit itself and you get no voltage there, you at least know that there, the problem is on the right-hand side. Okay, so in other words, if I put a meter lead here and a meter lead here, and my meter says zero volts, is that what you said? Yeah. Then that means the problem. problem could be what? Be specific. What? Could be from neutral to the, you know. So it could be from neutral here to here. Let's, the the let's take out wires right now. Remember I said wires break, but they don't break that often. Yeah. So it could be what or what? It could be a door switch or the, the push or the start, push switch. start switch. So by taking my two meter leads here, and all I do is take this one meter lead here, and it says no voltage, then my problem's here or here. Now let me explain something to you, what that means. I'm here and my meter says no voltage. If you said I move this from here to here and it still says zero volts, that the problem is on this side, but my meter's here, I'm not getting voltage here or here. I don't have voltage here. That's what I'm saying. You might have voltage. I might have voltage. Remember, hold on a second. Remember, a voltmeter is like a light bulb. It needs both wires to be connected in order to work. When I say I don't have zero, I have zero volts here, it doesn't mean the voltage from here is not coming in. It means one side of the circuit's broken, so the meter cannot tell me which side just with that one test. I don't know if line one's not coming in. I don't know if neutral's not coming in. If I move this meter lead from here to here, and my meter says zero volts, that doesn't mean there's no voltage here, okay? We tested here and here at the beginning, and we said what? There was voltage there, okay? But this meter lead stayed here. I know I had voltage at this point. I don't have voltage at that point, so now I need to go back and find out where is it broken in this circuit that's not getting my meter to read? So you have to understand when we're checking voltage, I need both of them to come in. I need both of them to feed. So if I do this and I get zero volts, I can put the meter lead back here and take this one and put it to neutral. If one of these two are at fault, right here my reading is zero, what should my reading be from here to here? 120. 120. Okay, now this is on the back of the machine where the power cord comes in, and the motor's in the front of the machine. I'm telling you the very first test, we're on one on the motor, and we took this one and went here. Then it sounds like I said, put this one back and take this one here. So you got one down in the front of the machine and one around the back, and now it sounds like switch them. I could do this, watch this. I could take this one and put it here and say no voltage. I could take this one and just move this one here and leave it here. If either one of these are broken, I'm gonna get what? But wait a minute, this is neutral and that's neutral. I'm not supposed to have 120 if both of them are on neutral. 
Well, what's happening is line one came in, went all the way through my motor up to here. Neutral went to here. I don't know. Neutral didn't make it here. If neutral made it to here and both mu leads were here, it would say no voltage. Because you're reading the same line. So you have to know when we're using this meter on one side of the circuit, the other side of the circuit, what it's telling us. Back in the days, the old timers, when we had electricity and they tested circuits, they used test lights. Mechanics on cars still use that little yeah, screwdriver, an alligator clip, and they clip it to a ground and they touch. And if it's got power, it lights up. It's the same thing as a meter. The good thing about the meter is it tells you exactly how much voltage. Yeah, 120, 240. The light just comes on or off. Okay, so if I go here, no voltage, and here, no voltage, it doesn't mean my problem's on this side. It means my problem's on that side. And this is something you're going to have to practice. I'm going to give you some different diagrams tomorrow. They're not going to be full machine diagrams. We're going to do machine diagrams on Thursday with test points. You guys are going to practice in the class. And tomorrow you're just going to have regular light bulb circuits, so simplified. But you have to know what it is. So if I don't have voltage here, no voltage, 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 what's my problem? Which it starts with. I have it here, but I don't have it here. That switches back. But every time I do a voltage test, here, here, or whatever, I have to press that button down, at least on this side. So I have to set my meter, that's why I got alligator clips, or stick them in the terminal so they stay in like that, and press the button. If I don't press the button, I'm not gonna get readings there. But Mr. Lizzie, sometimes I see, it's kind of easy to say like that, but when you get into practice, that's kind of easy. Okay, it's, not, it's not difficult at all. Let me say one thing real quick and then I'll let you finish your thought. You have to know what that switch is and where those two terminals are. You have to know that this switch comes after that switch. When you look at a machine, the wires are hidden behind panels. You can see the switch and you see the two wires and they run over here and they're bundled up with 40 more wires and you don't see them anymore. And then over here is the door switch. And you may see the same color wire way over here. Don't worry about from here to there. You just know that this door switch has got two wires on it, neutral and the other side. And I need to know that if I put my meter here, am I on this point or I'm on this point? If I put my meter on here, the timer, am I on the black wire, this one in the middle, or I'm on the blue wire, this one over here? So what are you gonna say? Yeah, that sometimes the diagram tells you what color of wire that you're checking for this particular point. But when you go to the machine and you have to put the motor is underneath, and you have to take the door off so you can have access to it, and now you have the door switch. Sometimes I bypass it too. So you bypass it, okay? But but the whirlpool dryer, you could leave the switch connected and take the panel, and put it on the side of the machine, connected. Yeah. Yeah, but some machine, I don't know remember what, which one it was, but you have to take the door out and do, I don't know. You have to take the door off the whirlpool to get to the motor, but you can leave the wires connected. There's a little clip, you unclip the wires, put them over the side of the machine and take the whole panel for the front, put it to the side of the machine, and you can leave the wires connected. If you can't leave the wires connected, you have a little jumper wire just sticking in between the two terminals. But, when you guys are working on machines and you're doing these packages, some of you are rushing through the package. All right, I got the package yesterday. I did the machine. I took it all apart and everything. You guys need to spend two or three days on each machine because I guarantee some of you that are working on the machines, after you give me the package, I can walk up and say, this piece right here, show me it on the diagram. This terminal right here, this one terminal on this switch, show me where is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Where is it? If you don't know those answers, when you come time to troubleshoot, you don't know where to put your meter. Troubleshooting, everybody wants to come in this class, they want to work on a machine, and they say, I want to know how to fix this machine. Give me two days, I got this. Sometimes some people catch up very fast, sometimes it takes practice, but those packages are not there to be busy work just to say, well, 
you know, he did the dryer in two days, you know, he's already on washing machines. You know, that's not how you learn. You have to learn each switch, why is it there, and how to check the switch, and why do I check these two terminals instead of these two terminals? We did that here at the dryer yesterday. Remember I showed you the temperature selector switch? Yes. And there's a chart there. How does that chart work? Because I can add a temperature switch in here. How do you know if the switch is supposed to go this way or the switch is supposed to go that way? You need to use the chart. You need to know how to read that diagram. And you need to know how that works with the part. This class is so many hours of training because you guys have not messed with these machines enough where you can pick it up. Like, a guy asked me to look at an air fryer the other day. I have it sitting there where you guys clock in, a big black mm -hmm. thing. It wasn't heated. There's no diagram. I walked in, took it apart, doom, doom, doom. I made two tests. I said, you got a bad heating element. You didn't need a diagram. I could look at it and figure out. It goes here, there's a relay on the board. It goes here, power comes in. Fans working, I got power in and out the board. I can hear the relay click when I turn it on, bam. I have voltage to the element, pull the element out, check ohms, it, it's open. That's it, I'm done. It took me longer to take the screws out than it did to test it. Oh. Appliances, for the most part, are that way until we start giving the machines that computerized, the electronic. They're a little bit more complicated, okay? But let's start off with the basic switches and controls. So I'm gonna stop this lecture now unless anybody's got any questions. And we're gonna do the light bulb circuit after that. But anybody got any questions on this? No? Okay, I know I didn't go back to that light bulb thing, but I'm gonna give you guys no, some practice well, tomorrow. I got one question I would like. Yes. This is for the centrifugal switch. One that, that activate one you have uh, for the heater. And the 1M and 2M? And the centrifugal switch. This one, yeah, yeah. 1M and 2M. That turns on the heater. But that switch doesn't close unless the motor's running. Yeah, I know it's in the motor. That's it's it's uh, activated when the heater for the heater only. Yeah, that in other words, when the motor runs, what is the purpose of the motor in the dryer? What's this? The basket. To turn, turn, turn the barrel. To, to turn what? The barrel. The, the basket. Drum. The drum. So that may drum. Yeah. Is that the only purpose? Get the, no, it's also there the to turn the blower as well. It, it, it's, it's connected to a fan, circulate the air. Yep. Well, you know, when I close the timer, I take that timer here and put it to time dry. You know what? This switch in the timer and this switch in the timer close. This is, all these are closed right now. If I didn't have the centrifugal switch in this circuit, as soon as I turn the timer, I close this switch, let's say the switch wasn't there, that heater would come on without the motor running. Is that good? Negative. No, no you no, have no air flowing over that heater, and you can cause a fire. You could damage something. That heater gets so hot, it needs that air circulation. So the safety is this centrifugal switch. If this motor's not running, we don't want this heater to come on. That's a bad thing. So they put that switch on the motor to control it, and all dryers use the centrifugal switch to control the mo uh, to control the heater. It has a separate switch to control the windings in the motor, but this one controls the heater. All right. Any other questions? No. Okay. Thank you.